Hey guys, John here from ContraBim, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about how to model concrete block walls using the curtain wall tool. Now, this can be a pretty effective method for actually getting the actual placement of blocks in either regular patterns or um, even some unique patterns. And so I thought it would be a fun little exercise to kind of walk through the steps of building this up from scratch and uh, talk about some of the different techniques of how to actually get this to function. Uh, so we'll start out by going over some real basics here for how to use the curtain wall tool to create these different uh, block, uh, essentially components. Um, we'll talk about how to do some different knockouts for either uh, windows or doors. Um, we'll talk about how to do some uh, kind of common or like running bond uh, distribution as we're looking at right here. And then we'll also talk about how to create custom panels so that you can get some interesting uh, breeze block style or uh, shadow block uh, working with the curtain wall tool. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and jump into it. We're going to start out with the basics here and uh, we'll kind of build this up from, uh, from scratch. So, um, so yeah, what I want to begin with here is let's actually just start with, um, kind of the curtain wall layout here. Um, we're going to open up the curtain wall settings and let's just actually start by, we're going to just clear the pattern so that we don't really have anything in here. Um, at all. So when you hit this little X up in the top corner here, that does clear the pattern. So all we have now is just a deleted panel. And just for the sake of simplicity here, um, I'm going to set these so that we are starting our columns and our rows just based off of fixed size. And I'm just going to set all of these just one foot by one foot so that we have just kind of a standard pattern of uh, just, you know, regular, regular square spacing. So um, so we don't even have a panel assigned here, but we can go through and we can just set this to, it um, doesn't really matter, a distinct panel or main panel. We'll set this in this case to a main panel. And then let's go in and we'll just check the settings of that main panel here. So uh, we'll go ahead, we'll grab this here. We can check our uh, sizing on this. So um, you can see here our width in this case would be seven and five eighths inch, which is fine. So that would be kind of a standard width on an eight inch block. So we'll just go ahead and uh, work with that to begin with. So, okay, so that would be our main panel here. Um, so next up is we need to talk about, um, so actually let's just take this and we'll just start modeling and then we'll start building up some of the uh, some of the, the different sections here. So we're going to take this, we're going to model it over. Let's just take like a, I don't know, an eight foot segment here. And okay, so there we go. We can see that we have just kind of this, this common um, uh, setting here. Um, if we actually go back into our panel settings, you can see that we already had this assigned to that concrete uh, masonry unit, which is fine. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's that's starting us out here. Let's highlight this in 3D and so we can see this. So um, really this looks like just like a, a standard wall. Because we're using a masonry block material with the masonry uh, texture, we're actually already getting this coming through. But if we go in, or sorry, we're already getting the pattern coming through. But if we go in and we turn off our panels and we turn on like our scheme grid, you can see that yes, we are on that one foot by one foot pattern here. So, okay, so with that, it's time to really start getting in here and creating a little bit of division. And I think actually a good place to start with this is let's actually, we can leave this as a concrete masonry unit, but let's just do some overrides here. And I'm just going to set this to to like a oh we could use any of these different concrete textures let's just do like a precast dark for the moment and we'll just make all those the same and okay so there we go we can see that we have uh, really just like it looks like a solid panel coming through now so okay if we want to start actually getting some spacings and some grids coming through um, we need to go back to our scheme setting here and when we click on these you can see that the reason that our wall currently is all being merged together here is because we just have this simply turned on as merge panels. So we can take these, we can just, we can actually assign these as like a division um, and we can see if that gives us anything different. So you can see, nope, it's not going to, it's just going to leave it as, um, 
that one merge panel. So if we wanna actually start getting some of these spacings as um, what we would typically see in our grout lines or our mortar uh, gaps, um, we actually need to start assigning a frame to this here. So um, we have some options. When we click on one of these right now, we just have it set to a division, um, but we could either, you know, we could either merge the panels, we have just a general division, or we can assign some of our frames here. So we can even go into our frames and just create a new category here. And we can just call this um, like a, a mortar gap, which would be fine in this case. Um, I like, uh, honestly, I just like leaving these as invisible. I think that I I think they do a good job of just giving us that that look of that reveal. But you can start going through and applying different um, actual frames to get that mortar to be represented. But in this case, we're just going to leave it simple and start out with an invisible frame here. And okay, so we can leave it at 1 8 inch. That's going to leave us with a quarter inch total. Um, which is fine for now. Typically it's a 3 8 inch. So in that case, we would set this to 3 Actually, let's just do that. We'll set this to 3 16 So that would give us our kind of common 3 8 gap because this is from our center point here. And so with that, we can go back to our scheme and we can just assign these both on the top and on the side as a mortar gap. So our other boundaries that we have here for along the direction, you know, on the on our boundaries, um, we can go back to our frames here, just check these, and I usually like just zeroing these out with this type of application of block. So, okay, so with that, we've now applied our mortar gaps on each side. Let's hit okay and see what we get. Okay, so we are starting to get this coming through. If we exit our curtain wall mode, you can kind of see that, okay, yes, we are starting to get uh, kind of the, the breakup in those individual uh, uh, panels there. So that's that's wonderful. That's what we wanted. Um, we can even go in here now, and um, if we wanted to give this just a little bit more definition, maybe we just change it from like a gray to a black. And so now we can really see those contours coming through. So, okay, so with that here, we can take this now because this is a curtain wall, and we can just start you know, pulling this out, we can send this another, I don't know, eight feet. And so now we can simply just model with our curtain wall and actually get this coming through, which does, to me, this does look a lot uh, kind of cleaner and a lot more definition than what we get from our, just our standard CMU uh, pattern. And um, so with this, because it's a curtain wall, we can go through and um, we know these are one by one spacing. So we go through and just kind of turn off our, our frames, turn off, actually we'll leave our frames on. So you can see the, the, the spacing here. Um, if we turn on frames and panels, we can actually go through, uh, depending on what our selection mode is, if we do like a, a partial selection, we can go through and then just start kind of clearing out and creating some openings here. So we can do that there. We can add, if we wanted to add like a window in, we could do that as well. So pretty easily we can go through and just start creating gaps in here. And beyond that now, we can go in and uh, pick out different panels. So we can just go to like a, I don't know, just like a curtain wall door pick that up and we can start applying that directly in here. We can do the same thing with a window. Um, let's see, double window. So we can start infilling directly in just by using our kind of standard spacing here from our uh, block layout. So, um, okay, so that is one method of just simply creating a common pattern, just a one by one. And uh, yeah, we deleted some out. We went in and uh, you know added uh, some doors and windows. Um, of course here, I probably wanna go through and maybe do some editing on the actual settings here. So we may wanna go in and adjust how that is being set within there. Um, but we can play around with those settings and get those um, to, push in a little bit. Let's see what two inches does. Okay, so that does, that brings it in quite nicely.
Okay, so let's take this one step further here now. So we have this common one foot by one foot spacing. I'm actually going to pick up the settings on this wall and um, we can start modeling with this again. It looks like I actually got a little off spacing there when I probably extended it. So let's take this one step further here and we are going to just create like a 10 foot long segment and then we're going to go in and we're going to modify the settings on this one. So, okay, so let's jump back in here. Just highlighted this in this direction. And okay, so let's go back into our scheme. What I want to do now is I want to modify this scheme here so that we can get more of a running bond uh, style. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to reduce the sizing on our gaps here. So we're going to go six inches by six inches and we're going to create a few more segments here. Uh, I'm not sure how many we'll do total. We'll do yeah two rows here. And so now what we wanna do is we can go through and we can actually start deleting out some of these panels and we can just leave these as like a merge panel here. So based off this, we can go through and we can we can leave our joints for our mortar gaps here, but then we can go through and just simply delete out the ones that we don't want and we're going to merge those panels back together. So we actually don't even need this row here. I'm going to remove that row and this should give us a pretty kind of nice even spacing here um, actually, you know what? I'm going to add one more, one more row. So we're going to delete out that gap there. And then we are going to insert a mortar gap here. And so that's going to leave us with two of these panels here that are going to be nice and merged. And then we have one that will be hopefully merging here on the end. So, um, so with this here, we actually need to delete that that merge panel so that it will merge on this side when we start modeling um, or when, when the pattern repeats. So, okay, let's go ahead and check this out and see if I did this right. So we'll hit okay and we'll check out the pattern. And okay, so that looks pretty good. It uh, definitely seems like we have that running bond pattern working. And um, so yeah, that's great. So that's how we can quickly just modify that pattern to get um, this actual uh, spacing uh, functioning for our, our kind of common CMU type. Okay, so let's take this one step further here. And what I think I'll actually want to do is I'm going to pick up the pattern here from our kind of our standard um, uh, 12 by 12. And what I want to talk about now is how we can actually create some custom blocks some custom units here uh, to kind of represent something that's a little bit more decorative. So, um, so you can see that there's several different patterns here. I just found a, if you search on Google, you can find a million different CMU block patterns. And so what I've done is I actually went through and already created a few. Um, so I'll show you how we can apply that to a custom curtain wall. Uh, using these blocks and then we'll kind of walk through the steps um, from scratch for how we can create those and load them in so Okay, so next up here. We're going to kind of continue along our line here on the top and So I've picked up that pattern here for just our kind of common 12 by 12 We'll send this 10 feet to the right and let's just pick this up now So okay, so we have we're back to like our you know our common uh, regular spacing here. Um, what we can do is we can go into our settings here and what we need to do is we actually need to go in and create a new custom panel. So what we'll do is we'll just simply add a new panel. We'll just call this a custom, uh, we'll call this a vent. We'll call this vent block type one. So we can have multiple different types here, but the in order to access our custom panels, what we'll do is we'll actually switch this over so that we uh, have this set up as our curtain wall custom panel 24. And let's see our preview here. So you can actually see that right off the, the bat, it's going through and it's already searching 
for some of these preset panels that we already have loaded in here. So we can simply just uh, select one. We'll select our square panel in this case. Um, it's kind of interesting the sizing on that um, isn't quite square, but I think it will be because our scheme in this case is square. So let's go ahead and we'll just simply apply this. And we can do that by selecting our main panel. And we just, as soon as we create that new panel type, we can switch this over and apply it. So, okay, there we go. It's pretty much as easy as that. Um, and so that's how we can create these new panels. What's nice about this is um, we can actually adjust the thickness on these um, just by essentially changing the thickness on our frames here. So say if we wanted to go like five and five eighths, um, in this case, we actually have a uh, we have a panel thickness, and then we have a clamp thickness. And so um, you have some different options here for how you want to set these up. But um, typically, I like just making them the same. Or you also have the option here to extend the panel size to the clamp size. So um, some different options there. So we can just based on that and the profile of those objects there, we can stretch these in the in uh, in the width direction and uh, easily make those any size we want. Um, we have some other options here as well. So obviously we can go through and we can um, start selecting out different parts and pieces to delete. So that's one way we can just easily create a door. Um, if we wanted to get into say like our, um, let's do this, let's turn off our panels and we go in here to our frames, if we de delete these out and we turn back our panels, you can see that that's automatically going to go through and fill that back in. So you can actually see how it's stretching it here. So it's stretching it really in uh, just one direction. So it, it, we kind of start getting skewed a little bit on our thicknesses there, but, um, but still it makes it really easy to go through and make some modifications here. And we can quickly just add those back if we wanted to. So um, and we'll turn those back on. Uh, so yeah, it's quite, quite easy to make these adjustments here. Um, and let's, okay, so let's walk through the steps now for how, how we can actually create a new custom panel and then we'll, we'll go through and we'll load that in. So, um, okay, coming over here to kind of our little sample selection. Um, let's pick one that's relatively a little bit more simple. So, um, I'm thinking maybe something, let's see, let's do this one here. I kind of like this one. So what we'll do is because we know the size that we want to fit this to, I'm actually going to start here by just simply creating a square. So we're going to set this to just be one foot by one foot. We can take this and kind of get it lined up so that we're pretty close. Looks like the image is skewed slightly, but okay. So there we go. We have our outline. I'm going to suspend my groups here and offset so that we have our border at least. So we'll go, I don't know, one and an eighth. And then we can simply go through and start using our arc tool to create some different lines in the middle. So that looks like that's pretty close. So um, it seems like, yeah, looking at this here, it seems like it wants to kind of tie right into the corner. So let's actually use that. So we can swing it from there to there. And then if we take this, we can probably just mirror it around a few times and get our shape going. Okay. So we're starting to get our outline there. I probably should have offset this. So what we'll do is we'll offset directly to the middle. And I think I might actually overextend this just a little bit here so that we're offsetting it so that we're actually tying in right at that point. And let's just mirror this around a few times. Mirrored in this direction. 
And okay, so time to do some trimming. So I'm just holding down control as I'm clicking through here. Lots of little parts and pieces, but we'll just trim out our shape. And then from here, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is save it out as an object with a custom curtain wall panel type, and then we're pretty much good to go. So, okay, so I think that is the shape that we're going for. We're going to, in this case, I'm going to just actually um, add some different elements over here. These are just like some general blocks um, that I have set to like an object modeling shape. So we're going to fill that in, and then we're just gonna click around and create all those little holes. So one thing I've noticed with this is it definitely does help when you have this set to zero as kind of your starting point. So I'm gonna move it off of zero for the moment. And then we're gonna just snap it back down here so that if you have the base or the, the bottom elevation of your block um, at zero, and then you start it moving in the positive uh, Z direction in this case, it tends to just function a little bit easier when you are actually placing these blocks and trying to get them uh, in the right orientation. So, okay, so from here, I always like switching over to my Axo view and then we'll click on the top of that surface so we're looking at it straight on. And then with it selected, we'll simply go to Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as Curtain Wall Panel. And it's going to ask you, okay, um, we're creating a new curtain wall panel, will be rotated to fit the custom reference plane. Um, and so it's just asking which plane is parallel to, or which, which face or which plane is parallel to this plane. So in this case, that's going to be the horizontal plane. Um, I think the current editing plane would also work in this case, but we'll use horizontal plane and continue and save. And then we'll just call this uh, CMU. Um, I'm gonna call this a flower because it kind of looks like a flower shape. So, okay, let's hit save on this. Okay, and as soon as we save this, now we can go back to our custom panel there. So I'm going back to, sorry, we're gonna go back to that pattern that we had created, kind of up here to the right. We'll actually take this, we'll copy it all the way over, isolate here in 3D. I always like going back to perspective. And then all we need to do is we can go in and let's create a new panel type. So we're going to add a new one and we're just gonna call this uh, type two in this case. So we have event block type. Yeah, we're just duplicating the previous one. And so with that, all we need to do is go and find it from our drop down here. So as soon as you save that object type, it's going to recognize that it's a curtain wall panel and then you can simply just select it and we should be good to go from here. So we hit okay. Um, oop, we forgot one step there. So last step is we go to our scheme and then we can simply just uh, assign it to our type two in this case. And okay, so what happened here is it actually recognized that we had gone through and done some custom work on these, the, the header here. So with that, we would actually wanna go through and we can um, reapply our new panels. And so the way that we can do that is we can simply just eyedropper this and then inject. And so that's going to go through and switch those all over for us. So pretty easy to make those adjustments. Uh, the same thing works if we wanted to give it some detail, we can switch this back so we can go pick one. Um, we can set this up as, so let's just do uh, a diamond in this case. Might be kind of like a nice flare. Okay, so this is one case here where you can actually see that I think that's one that I'd save where it was going in the negative direction. And so with that, we can go in, you might find that you have to go through and flip these around. And we can actually see that flipped, but we still need to um, change our offset. So I think in this case, if we, I think we can actually do a negative panel thickness. No, I guess not. So we're just going to simply offset this in the other direction. So it does take a little bit of time playing around with this, I've noticed. 
So that's why it's useful to have a very predictable which direction you're going. So, okay, so we can switch that out. We can probably go in and change the coloration on that as well in our custom settings here. So if we switch this over, we could go to, oh, what might look good? These are all just materials. I guess we can just, we don't need to override the material. Let's just override the surface. So. Override surface. Did that work? I don't think it did. Okay, this will work. Okay, so we can just set this to like a bright white if we wanted to get a little bit more accent out of there. Or we could do something a little bit more dramatic and set it to like a paint and block. And from here, we can just take these, pick them up, inject them wherever we want. So, so yeah, just by doing that, we can create some interesting accents here. I'm just going to take this all the way around. And yeah, it's pretty easy once you get it going. So probably could have selected all those and done them all at once. But um, so yeah, you can see that it doesn't take too long. You can create these custom patterns and apply it however you'd like. And so yeah, that is uh, pretty much what I wanted to cover in the lesson for today. So um, just to do a quick recap here. Um, we started out by just creating a really basic um, layout here with a 12 by 12 grid. Um, so we started with this one here. We kind of knocked out some areas for doors and windows. Uh, we then went through and made some adjustments to our spacing so that we could get a little bit more of like a, uh, uh, a running bond style as we're seeing here, um, which is pretty typical for concrete masonry blocks. We did that by setting our grid slightly smaller so that we had a six by six, and then we merged the two sixes in this case. So you could go through and adjust those. And, you know, if you wanted to change the height on one of these, say we go to four inches, you could really start giving it a little bit more variation just by changing, um, you know, a few values there. Um, and then we, we went through and started assigning custom panels here. So we did that by creating a new panel type and then assigning that to our custom panel uh, type there. So, and then from there we went through, created a new, um, a new custom panel, applied it and uh, yeah, played with our pattern a little bit there. So, okay, hopefully you picked up a few little tips and tricks from this, uh, this tutorial. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on this at all. Um, and yeah, hopefully you can take this and apply it. Oh, one thing we didn't talk about was uh, the shadow block example here. Um, and actually there's one little note here that I wanna point out. So what's cool with, once you get these set up, and if you have some patterns that are not um, exactly the uh, symmetrical, meaning that each one of these individual blocks here is actually an individual um, element with this kind of custom face on this. There is a direction associated with these. So you can actually see there's a little node in here and you can grab this and you can take it and drag it around. And based off the settings of this object here, it's going to um, essentially go through and uh, just rotate it in whatever direction you want. So if we undo those last two, you can see very easily how I created these kind of pointing in from the side here. So you can take these and just kind of swing them around in whatever direction you want. So, um, so these are stretchy. So if you, it's always good to have, you know, full spacing on the different blocks. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you can take these and adjust your pattern as needed, or you can always go through and switch these out for uh, uh, common common elements, kind of like what I did down here. This is still a custom block, but it's just a uh, without any sort of uh, face profile. So, okay, with that, I think that probably wraps this one up. Uh, if you have any questions, then leave it in the comments section. If you like this type of content and tutorials like this on Archicad, uh, be sure to subscribe and uh, like and share the channel. And um, yeah, we will catch you here on another ContraBIM video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.